Derivatives have a number of applications in the business world. The one we'll take a look at in this module will be marginal analysis. So keep in mind that we, when we introduced derivatives, we talked about how derivatives tell us about the rate of change of our function. Or the other way to say that would be derivatives tell us about the slope of our function. But what's different about curves versus straight lines is that slope isn't always constant. So we use this more general expression of rate of change. So if we evaluate our derivative function for some given value of x, we have a few different possibilities. We could have that derivative function giving us a result that's something greater than zero, something positive. So if our slope or our rate of change is positive, that tells us that our function is increasing. Another scenario would be that our derivative function evaluated at some given point would be something less than zero, so we would end up with a negative result. If our slope or rate of change is negative, that would tell us that our function is decreasing. We can be even a little bit more precise here, rather than just saying increasing or decreasing, we can say that derivatives allow us to approximate our function value if x, the value that we're plugging in, say our production level, is increased by one unit. So if we're dealing with a result where our derivative is positive, that means that our function value is increasing. So if our x value is increased by 1, it means that our function value will increase as well. Similarly, if our function value is negative, then we would see our function value decrease as x increases. So essentially what we're looking at when we calculate the derivative at some point, say this is a revenue function, and we're at a production level of 100 units, we would have some corresponding total revenue. And what we want to do is understand or come up with an approximation for what would happen if we increased our production by one unit. So what we can do is make use of derivatives. We've seen already how we can find the derivative of a function at a given point to get the slope of a tangent line. So we can come up with a line that's tangent to our curve, and we can use that to approximate what our next function value would be if x is increased by one unit. So we'll take a look a little more specifically what we mean here by that. In our first example, we want to consider a company that manufactures fuel tanks, uh, and we're given this cost function. The first thing that we want to do is evaluate our cost function at 501 and at 500. So what this is doing is saying we're finding our total cost to produce 501 units, and then we're subtracting out the total cost of producing 500 units. So what that would leave us with is just the exact cost of producing that 501st unit. So using a calculator or Wolfram Alpha, we could evaluate this given function at 501 and 500 and subtract those two results to get 39.95. So again, what that means is the exact cost of producing the 501st fuel tank is going to be $39.95. So through that process, we're able to find the exact cost of producing just that 501st tank. Now what we want to do is make use of derivatives to approximate that value or see how close our approximation would be. So what we can do next is find our, the derivative of our cost function. So we could plug that into Wolfram Alpha, and we would generate 90 minus 0.1x. If we evaluate that function, the derivative function, at 500, we would get a result of 40. So what this is telling us is that if we increase our cost by 1, or I'm sorry, increase our production level by 1, then our function value, our cost, will increase by 40 units. So the approximate cost 
of producing the 501st fuel tank is $40, which is very, very close to our exact cost of producing that 501st tank. So when we calculated the derivative and evaluated it at 500, that's telling us that the cost to increase x by 1, or the impact on our function value if we increase x by 1, would be going from a production level of 500 units to 501. And that increase of one unit would increase our cost by $40. When we look at this idea of C prime of x, we refer to that as the marginal cost function. It tells us, again, the approximate cost of producing one more item. So if we know the derivative of a function, we can evaluate it at a single point rather than what we did in part A, where we had to evaluate the original function at two different points and take that difference. So we have a streamlined process for coming up with a result that's very, very close to that exact result to, un to better understand what's going to happen to our cost if we increase production. So we have our marginal cost function, which is just the derivative of the cost function. Similarly, we'll have a marginal revenue function and a marginal profit function, which will just be derivatives of those respective functions. And we can also look at marginal average functions so keep in mind our average cost function is c of x over x and that would be a similar pattern for average revenue and average profit so our marginal average cost function would just be the derivative of that average cost function or the derivative of c of x over x so similarly we would have a marginal average revenue function which would be the derivative of our average revenue function and a derivative, I'm sorry, uh, a marginal average profit function, which would be the derivative of our average profit function. So we can look at any of these six different functions to determine what would happen to our cost, revenue, profit, or our average cost, average revenue, or average profit if we increase production by one unit.